muted. Welcome everyone to today's webinar. It is the power of the inbox, tips and tricks for successful email marketing. And for those of you who might not know me, uh, my name is Maria Semple. I am uh, the principal of the Prospect Finder. I'm an authorized local expert with Constant Contact. And I'm also the author of a book called Magnify Your Business, Tips, Tools, and Strategies for Growing Your Business or Your Nonprofit. You can check that out on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, my website, and uh, you can get that book right through those sites. So I hope you'll connect with me on social media afterward if we are not already connected there. And uh, you will have all of this information, as I said, in the slides once I send them out to you. So without further ado, what are we talking about today? What is email marketing? Why is this going to be important for your small business or your nonprofit organization? So what email marketing is not, it's not about spamming people. Believe it or not, there are actual laws in place here in the United States and in Canada, if you do business there, um, that are very strict around email marketing. So it's important to adhere to those. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I mute everyone here. Just give me a moment. Okay, so what it is about is about delivering professional email communications to an interested audience that really finds their communi your communications interesting for them, okay? So it's very, very important that um, not only you look great in the inbox, but that you are communicating to people the information that they want to hear. Okay, it's very, very important. Because what happens with all of us if we get a communication in our own inboxes and we feel that it's not relevant? We tend to just want to mark it as spam. We tend to just delete the communication. And sooner or later, we'll unsubscribe to that list. Right? So you want to make sure that you're not only looking great, but people are finding the information valuable to them. Um, no. So what can it do for your business? It can definitely increase revenues and profits for your business. So for example, here we have a specific business, Cotton Clouds, that talks about every time they send out an email, they get sales within 15 minutes. So if you are a retail or even an online retail operation, a business to consumer type of industry, um, email marketing can definitely help your business grow. If you are a, an organization that is um, looking to increase awareness, it definitely can do that for your organization, right? If you have people that just need to know a little bit more about what you do, um, it does help in terms of trying to get to know, like, and trust your business, right? So that's what it's all about today. It's about engagement marketing so that people can understand who you are and what you're all about. What can it do also for your business? It can boost repeat business. So it can get people in the door who are perhaps not coming in the door on a consistent basis. You can let them know about some specific uh, products or services that you might be featuring. Um, and also, if you do have a specific day of the week, for example, that might be um, a little bit slower, it's an opportunity for you to actually let people know, hey, we've got some openings today. Um, and I know a lot of uh, companies that use this very successful to book people in on a slower day. So are you ready to harness the power of email marketing? Here's what we're going to be talking about today. We'll talk about the power of the inbox, growing a healthy list, um, creating a great content, uh, designing those mobile-friendly templates. And this is very important, focusing on mobile-friendly, mobile-responsive. Uh, today, you must have um, your email marketing must be mobile responsive, mobile friendly. Um, well over 50% of emails are being opened on mobile devices today. So we'll talk about some strategies to get those emails opened and then also to track your results because if you're not measuring your marketing, you're not really marketing. So you want to make sure you have a system in place that's going to track these results for you. 
So why email marketing? Well, as I mentioned earlier, more than half of all emails are opened on a mobile device. It is the number one app on smartphones today. So during the course of a day, you might be checking your email multiple times throughout the day, whether you're checking it on your smartphone, whether you're checking it on a desktop device, but I would bet that you're not checking in to all of your social networks on a consistent basis throughout the day as much as you're checking your email. And so here's kind of a crazy stat that more people across the globe own a cell phone than own a toothbrush. So that's really kind of a scary statistic to me. I don't know about you. Anyway, um, so people are checking it daily and they're checking it regularly on their smartphones. The other reason you want to think about it is it is reliable. Okay, um, With an, a professional email service provider, you can see that your emails are getting delivered into the inbox over 90% of the time. Okay, When you're thinking about Facebook, and Facebook just underwent some more changes, but their algorithm called EdgeRank tells you right off the bat that only 2% of your fans are actually seeing your organic posts on Facebook. That's because Facebook would like for you to boost those posts by paying to boost them out in front of very targeted audiences. So for a very low cost, you can get email delivered directly into people's inboxes versus waiting for them to go to their Facebook page and then hoping that only 2% of your fans are actually going to see that post. So why email? Because by now I think you can figure out it does work everywhere. It also has three times the conversion rate of social media. And here's a stat that I just love, and I know that this is true for my own business, that for every dollar I've spent on email marketing, I've seen this average return on investment of $44.25. So this has been a pretty consistent number. Um, and there are the sources are listed there at the bottom of the slide. So if you want to double check any of those, um, once I send you the slide deck, you're free to do so. But it is a very high return on investment. Lots of articles on the topic. The first impressions matter. They matter when you're doing your own networking uh, it, while you're out in at chamber events and so forth. So they matter when you're seeing somebody in person. Um, I know someone who is an image consultant, and when I see her speak, the one line that really resonates with me every time I see her speak is, uh, "You only have, uh, you never have a second chance to make a first impression." Right? You never have a second chance to make a first impression. So you want to make sure that those first impressions really matter. So when you're sending out your email marketing, notice the uh, email on the left. That would be what your emails would look like if you're sending them out of your Outlook account or Hotmail or Gmail or something like that. And you're only able to send out a very specific number of emails at a time uh, when you're sending them out from an account like that. And here's the kicker. When you send them out, even though you are blind copying people on this email, the computers receiving those emails recognize that there's a whole bunch of blind copies on this. And instead of routing your email to somebody's inbox, it's very likely you're going to get routed to a spam box. So be very careful about using um, your, your account in this way. Also, you're not able to um, stay compliant with some of the laws that are in place around email marketing. You don't have your business address listed at the bottom of the email. You don't have that one-click unsubscribe opportunity that must be available. A one-click unsubscribe must be available to stay compliant with the CAN Spam Act. Okay? So you want to make sure that you are staying compliant with the laws. Now the email on the right is created with an email service provider, one like Constant Contact, for example. So you're able to incorporate not only all of your branding and, and images and colors and logos, everything to match your website, but also you're staying compliant with all of the laws that are in place here in the United States and in Canada. So why it doesn't work, as I mentioned earlier, limited sending. If you're sending it out from your Yahoo or Hotmail or Gmail or Outlook account, you have no formatting control. You are much going to be much more susceptible to spam filters. 
none of your branding is appearing on here and I know some of you have spent a lot of money on your logos and your branding and your website so you really should take advantage and extend that into your email marketing as well. Um, your potential for spam complaints goes way up and you don't have the ability to track or report and as I said earlier if you're not measuring your marketing you're really not marketing so you don't know who's opened those emails if you're sending it out of your regular email provider. Whereas if you're sending it out from a system like Constant Contact, it's going to provide you with those beautiful templates, okay? And we'll talk a lot more about the templates in a moment. Definitely you're going to be reinforcing your brand identity. Subscriptions will get managed automatically. If somebody does a one-click opt-out of your email list, there is nothing more you need to do, right? So you don't have to manually go in and take them out of the program. The system takes care of that for you so that you stay compliant with all the laws, okay? And most importantly, you can also track all of the results. You'll know exactly who opened the emails and who clicked through on various links and photos. So we'll get, we'll get to that a little bit later in the presentation. So how do you grow a healthy list? How do you grow a healthy permission-based list? Okay, it's very important. It has to be a permission-based list. So it's all about how and where you decide to grow that list, right? And you have to think about things like, um, you know, asking. It's important that you actually ask for permission to grow the list. Even when you're meeting somebody in person and you're at a chamber event and you exchange business cards, please at least seek verbal permission from that person to join the list. You have to get express consent, okay? It's very important. You have to be straightforward. Let people know, I plan to send you something monthly, bi-monthly, weekly, whatever it is. There is one email list that I subscribe to where I get an email every day. It's a motivational message and I'm fine with getting that email every day because I know it's short and sweet and I actually kind of look forward to seeing that in my inbox every morning. But if, if I were to opt into a list where I expected only to get something monthly and suddenly I'm getting bombarded daily, I'm very likely to probably opt out of getting that um, those email communications. So be straightforward with people about how often you plan to send out. Always offer, offer that opt-out, okay? So that is something that's got to be built in. Respect their privacy. That means not selling or sharing those lists with any third parties and staying legally compliant. So it's very important that this be permission-based. So when you're thinking about asking online, um, think about that join our email list button that you can put on your website. Um, very often people will offer something in exchange for this. So when, when people visit my website and join my list, I send them a, automatically a, um, a, a social media guide, right? So this is the type of thing that can be delivered right through the welcome email. So um, people will click the join the email list. Um, in, uh, in screen number two there, what you'll see is the, um, the collection of data and you can decide how much information you want to collect uh, from each individual. And I would make that as short as possible. Uh, people really don't like to fill out very long forms. Um, and then whatever that, uh, that thing is that you want to deliver, whether it's a video, whether it's a PDF, whether it's a coupon, it can be delivered in the email, like you'll see in screen number three here, which is sent out automatically to folks as soon as they subscribe. It's called the welcome email. And so whatever that deliverable is that you want to send to people, it can be embedded right in that welcome email. So you yourself do not even need to get involved. You set this welcome email up once and that's it. So you'll notice here what Building Aspirations did. They, they're offering folks a, a video series if they opt into their email list. So video number one is being delivered right in the, in the welcome email. And then what happens is there's an autoresponder series that's set up to automatically deliver 
the remaining emit videos in the series. So that's also something that can be done is setting up what is called an autoresponder series or an automated email campaign. They're kind of interchangeable uh, terms, but most of the time in the industry it's called autoresponders. So where else do you ask? Think about events that you're attending or hosting. Um, think about you know um, setting out some sort of a sign-up form near your cash register or place of business. Um, unfortunately, there you are at the whim of having to read people's handwriting to go back and uh, input those into your uh, marketing uh, platform like Constant Contact. Um, you can use QR codes. We'll talk about that more in a moment. I think we've all um, experienced that fishbowl when we're attending vendor events and, and such. And think about uh, collecting those email addresses even through texting features. So we'll talk about this now. And that's what that lower uh, left-hand picture is. Subscribe uh, for $10 off at this particular salon, Salon Bella. So let's talk about this one a little bit more. I really love this feature. and. Even Constant Contact subscribers have no idea that this is in their account. So this is something that all of you can use. Um, you can use this in the sign-up tools. Um, it's included with your account. No additional charges to be able to use this. And you get to choose a trigger word for your business. So in this case, this particular salon chose the word Salon Bella. It's probably the name of the, the salon. So you get to choose your, your trigger word, and then um, what happens is folks who are walking by on the sidewalk, if they send a text to Salon Bella, um, to 22828, and they use the word Salon Bella uh, in the um, actual message field, what happens is they'll get a text back um, that'll say something to the effect of, thanks for your interest in joining our list, send us back your email address. And then they send back the email address, they become an automatic part of their constant contact database at Salon Bella, and the welcome email gets kicked out automatically. And in that welcome email is where they're delivering the $10 off coupon. So this works very, very well, not only for retail type businesses like this, um, but it can work for you even if you are a B2B consultant. There is something that you can deliver to folks automatically right through that welcome email as I showed you earlier. QR codes is another way. Now, they haven't taken off as much as I think we all felt they were going to do, so Constant Contact does still have this available as a feature. If you like to use QR codes, you can create a QR code that can be printed on the back of your uh, printed materials. Uh, when folks scan that code, it actually opens up a little um, uh, form that they can fill out to join your email list. So if you decide to use the texting feature or the QR code feature, either one, what, what this, what's really kind of cool about this is that it enables you to um, encourage people to use the smartphones that they're carrying around in their pockets, in their purses, pull them out, they can join your list automatically. So you'll want to have signage out at your events letting people know they can join your list. Um, this is a great thing for nonprofits to do if they have large events, um, galas, walks, things of that nature. Make sure there's signage around so people know they can join your list. And don't forget to give them a reason to join the list, right? So think about all the different things that you could be giving folks as, as, as a reason to join the list because the number one reason that they're going to unsubscribe is if they find that the content becomes irrelevant to them. So how do you create that great content? Well, there's a couple of things you need to focus on. As I mentioned earlier, it has to be relevant content. Figuring out how much is enough, and believe it or not, less is more today. So you don't have to come up with a tremendous amount of content. We'll talk about strategies for taking those frequently asked questions that you get about your business and turning those into content. And don't forget about images because they are content too. We've, we all know that pictures are worth a thousand words, so don't forget to include some images in your email marketing. Okay? And first and foremost, make sure you're always putting your reader's interests ahead of your own. Okay? Make sure that you are catering to the needs of the community that you are building. Your email list is a very valuable asset for your business and treat it as such. 
because what will happen is if you're writing for the audience and, and, and not for you, what will happen here is um, people will stay subscribed. Otherwise, they'll unsubscribe if it's boring, and they'll definitely hit that spam button if they feel that it's totally irrelevant to them. Okay? So thinking about when writing for your audience, make your messages relevant, short, and focused. You can make it relevant to your audience by thinking about the conversations you've had with your clients, your customers, or your members. After an interaction that you've had with someone, jot down some ideas for your next email and pick one or two ideas to highlight in each email. Your email shouldn't be telling recipients um, every single thing that you do, and it shouldn't include extraneous information. But what's too much information? So think about having like three pictures or less and 20 lines of text or less. Oh, I apologize for that garbled look on that, on that headline there. So make sure that you are thinking about keeping it short and sweet. I even have trouble with this 20 lines of text or less. Um, I keep it in mind as I go forward, but I do know that sometimes we need to go over. But just think about chunking your information in such a way that people are going to be able to peruse the email, okay? And most people um, are not reading every single word, um, so you're looking to elicit interest here. Think about including fewer clicks. What happens is um, if you give people too many options, uh, people kind of feel a little overwhelmed, and then they take no action at all. So the most click, the the most interactions happen when you have one click, maybe two clicks, three clicks or more. You start seeing a very steep decline in the number of clicks people will take in an email interaction. So you want to make sure that you're keeping the number of choices very limited in that email. And think about those questions that you can turn into content, right? You'll want to think about how do you ensure that your pipes don't burst, right? <laughs> Five ways to protect your pipes this winter. Um, so those questions that you get for your business, turn them into content. And notice what these, these three pieces of content all have in common. They've all got a number in the subject line and, and um, Sometimes the word you or your really elicits a much greater open rate um, and click-through rate. So make sure that you're, you're thinking about some of these strategies. And there are tons of articles online, um, including at Constant Contact, into how to create some great subject lines. We'll talk about some of those strategies in a moment. Now, with regard to images, you want to make sure that you're using them and using them sparingly and in the right places. So images are a great way to um, really kind of um, get to some of the emotions that, that people might have when they're reading your email. But you want to make sure with, when you're working with your photos that you're choosing um, the right size photo. Definitely avoid copyright issues. So you want to be careful about going out onto Google and just picking up on any images that you see. There could be copyright issues for you. So be very careful of that. Um, so you can definitely use all of your own photos that you're taking um, throughout your business day. Um, there are stock images that you can look at. Big Stock Photo is one of the sites. Um, and it's also um, uh, free images are included with your Constant Contact account. There's an image gallery there for free, and then there are some uh, fee-based photos as well. So make sure that you're using images um, legally. A couple of things you want to keep in mind with all the images that you include in your Constant Contact emails. Make every single image clickable. And what I mean by that is, if person hovers over that image in the email and they decide to click, it should either lead directly to the home page of your website or to a very specific page of your website. So in the case of this uh, travel agency here, um, if they're highlighting something about this Kauai vacation special, don't frustrate folks by sending them directly to the home page. Send them instead directly to the page of your website where this Kauai Vacation Special is highlighted so that they're not having to search around on your site 
don't forget, a lot of people are doing this on their mobile devices, so don't frustrate them further by trying to find this information on the site. So make the images clickable. Key actions that you want them to take should be above the scroll line. So here, this action that says view listings, right, this button that says view listings, you'll want to make sure that that is visible above the scroll line both on a desktop device and on your mobile device. So preview the email in constant contact. You can send it to up to five people to preview before you send this out to your list. Make sure you're previewing it yourself. Maybe send it to a colleague, or if you're a small business owner, send it to a family member. And it works, too, to, to have it sent to somebody who has a different mobile device than you have, because it may appear differently on a smaller iPhone than it's going to appear on a larger iPad or uh, on a larger Android, Android device. So make sure that you're, you're sending it to multiple devices if you can. If you can't, then at least send it to your own mobile device and check out to see how the images are appearing and if the key action is above that scroll line. So what do we need to do to design those mobile-friendly templates that match your brand? Okay, Make sure that you're looking great and recognizable by you in any inbox. Okay, So you want to make sure that you're replicating everything exactly as you see on your website in terms of colors and logos, etc. So be consistent and definitely make sure to use that similar language that you have across your various platforms that you're available online. So when you sign up with Constant Contact, not only would you have a level of customization like you just saw, but you also gain immediate access to beautiful professional looking templates designed to address your specific goals and save you time. So there's different templates that are designed to achieve your different needs to really help your business or your nonprofit be successful. So newsletters, for example, in the left column there, they typically showcase your expertise. Now remember, you're giving away good information for attention. Remember to use a teaser paragraph strategy. So if you have a long article, a whole article of content, Tease the first few sentences and create a read more link to the rest of the content. That content can be placed on a website or on a blog. You can even link the content to a PDF article. So this is going to help keep the newsletter short and it allows you to track your audience's interests. And the reason why you'll be able to track it is every time they click that click here link, you're going to have that as a measurement. You'll, under, you'll begin to understand what type of content people are interested in. Now that second column there shows announcements, right? So these are a great way to showcase maybe some special updates and opportunities that your business has. Um, maybe your business is even winning an award or a special event is going on or a sale. Or maybe you just want to generate interest in your newest product or service and, and give that audience a chance to provide you with some feedback. So clickable buttons are a perfect way to draw your reader's eye to an important, actionable part of your email. And the email on the right there, promotions, that's a, a typical template that you'll see for promoting. Um, make sure you don't give too many choices. Remember, you want to have someone see the benefit of your email and take a quick action. And you'll even find some pre-made coupons that you can customize for your promotion. You can even encourage your audience to spread the word for you by including your social media profiles. So the greatest benefit of all to these templates is really the ability to see how well you achieve each of your goals. So is your audience engaging in your newsletter articles? Uh, did your audience want to read more about your newest service? Or maybe how many people took advantage of your special coupon? And then what you can do is adjust your future emails to cater for what your audience likes. So we're going to talk a little bit more about some of those back, uh, back-end reporting features in just a couple minutes. So quick, simple recipe for success, single column template, fewer than three images, fewer than 20 lines of text, no more than three to five links, and keep that action item above the scroll line. So 
getting those emails opened. A couple of really important things that, that have to be kept in mind. And we're going to go into these in, into a little bit more depth. Recognize sender, compelling subject line, good timing, and those easy social options. So these are four things that we need to pay attention to. So how do people know you best? If you are the business, make sure your first and last name appear somewhere in that from line because that is going to be the key perhaps to getting your email opened okay so make it recognizable um, i'm never quite sure how people remember me after a webinar or a seminar so when i send the follow-up email with the slide deck for example um, i always make sure that both my first and last name appear in the subject line as well as my business name because at some point they're either going to remember Maria Semple or the prospect finder and I'm going to be then that recognized sender that's landing in their inbox. Hopefully I won't be known as a spammer to them. Subject line. More than a third of people then think once they get past understanding who it's from, they then take a focus on what's the subject line of this particular email. And more than a third of the people will open that email based on the subject line alone. So make sure that you're identifying your purpose. Make it clear. In some cases, you can even make it clever. Um, think about those strategies I talked about earlier, using a number, using the word you or your. So these are some things that, um, that will help you know, with your open rates on your email. Keep it short in terms of a subject line, 30 to 40 characters max, 6 to 10 words maximum. And then there's an area also known as pre-header text. And this might be newer to some folks, even if you've had your constant contact accounts for a while. So think about controlling that pre-header text. And let me tell you what I'm talking about here. You can customize the message. And again, it's all in the header options of the particular email that you're creating. Um, you can create that pre-header text and customize it so that when it lands in someone's inbox, um, you will be able to, um, it, it'll be like, when you look at those, message, those messages that are sitting in your inbox on your mobile device, you'll see the from line, you'll see the subject line, and then there's usually a third line of text there. So when we're done on the webinar today, pull your phones out and see what I'm talking about. You can actually customize that third line of text. You can kind of consider it as extra real estate in the inbox. Some of the words you want to think about choosing carefully are um, uh, that are going to get you landed in a spam box. A lot of those words are here on the screen. Um, free, act now, um, use of exclamation points could get you routed to somebody's spam box. So be very careful. Every time you create an email in Constant Contact, you can actually test it to see um, if it's going to rank high on, um, on, on being routed to a spam box, and then you can um, make some adjustments accordingly. Um, what time of day um, you're sending to people. I'm not really sure what's happening with this. I went through this earlier and it was fine. Um, but you'll want to make sure that you're coordinating and understanding what time of day um, things can work in terms of not only your email marketing, but across your social channels as well. So here is um, an email. Um, some general things that you can think about, thinking about what line of business you're in, um, in terms of what time of day you're, you're sending out, and you can see if your, your business falls in any, into, into any of these specific categories. Thinking about also um, the social share button. Um, one of the things that you want to make sure you're doing, if, if your, your constant contact allows for you to add a social share bar at the very top of the email, that's going to allow your recipients to share your emails on their social channels. So this is a great way to uh, leverage social media. Make sure that you're also sharing your emails on your own social channels. And don't forget to add social media buttons that represent your business as well. So when you're thinking about tracking these results, you want to understand which metrics matter so that you're making decisions uh, going forward and figuring out what you should be adjusting in your future email marketing pieces. So with your opens, you're not only going to be able to gauge interest, but it's going to help you to determine what your best day and time is overall 
for sending out your email marketing. So you can also test send this. Now, you, what you'll do when you open your account, you actually get to select what industry you're in. So it's going to give you your average, your actual open rate, your average open rates, but it's going to compare you against other people in your industry. Even with the click-throughs, it's going to help you understand what your averages are in your industry, but here it's going to help you measure success. Right? This is where you're going to start understanding what are the things that people click through on so that you give them more of that type of content going forward and making your future email marketing even more successful. When you think about re-engaging your audience, you know, testing new methods, um, you know, even the, you know, as on, on the did not opens, you'll understand you know, what should we do to try and re-engage this particular audience. You can even save this did not open list in a very specific as its own list and then maybe market to them a little bit differently, change up the subject line, do something different that, and change up something in the email and see if maybe um, changing up that subject line or the layout of the email um, elicits a better response even with the did not opens. And then certainly even with the opt-outs, you, you have an opportunity to see sometimes people will leave a reason as to why they have opted out. Okay? Um, and then instead of opting out altogether, they could be presented with the opportunity perhaps to stay engaged with your business just on a, maybe a quarterly basis or twice a year. You can actually give them options to stay engaged on a less consistent basis. And then you'll even be able to see which emails bounced. A lot of my, con my uh, clients will actually use this as a way to identify which email addresses are bad addresses so they can actually clean up their list. So when you're thinking about making your future decisions, if you have low metrics, right, so if you have low opens or low clicks, think about what things are that you can do to adjust. Make sure on the low opens, make sure your, your name, as I said earlier, is very recognizable. Change your subject line. The kiss of death, and I still get emails all the time that say June newsletter, July newsletter. It's just not compelling enough to warrant me clicking through and opening. So bring out something from the content and place it into your subject lines. It's going to be really have an immediate boost in your open rates. And make sure you're, you're monitoring for what time is best for the folks that you're sending to. Now, if you have low clicks, maybe your call to action isn't strong enough. So make sure that it stands out and it's not buried somewhere in verbiage. Whatever that call to action is, every email should have one. Think about it and make sure that it's clearly visible. Keep your emails short and send them even more targeted. Maybe you need to break down your lists a little bit more and segment them so that you get higher clicks and people are feeling like it's a lot more relevant to them. Finding the best time of day. Identify the best keywords. Segment even your super fans. So if you've got some higher metrics, think about those people that frequently engage with your emails, you have an opportunity to even segment them and call them super fans in a segmented list and then maybe give those, those VIP super fans um, something um, special um, from your business. Even if you have high clicks on those high metrics, um, think about those, those links to, to stand out even more. Um, you can offer some links to preferred content. And again, here, even for the folks that we kind of, you know, call super clickers, right, the people that are really engaged with your emails, you, um, again, reward them in some way. And spotlight on the click-through here. So what we want to talk about here is understanding, and this is exactly what your, your metrics will look like in terms of understanding um, what folks clicked on, you'll know exactly who clicked on those links, the date and time they clicked on them. So again, you want to make sure that you're monitoring these metrics and understanding what's having the, the, uh, the best, um, you know, helping your bottom line the best. So whether you're a nonprofit or a, a for-profit business, 
what, what is the action that you wanted people to take? What is that call to action and that click-through? And see if you are getting the click-throughs that you want. You can view the clickers, as I mentioned, in terms of exactly who opened the email um, and the date and time they opened them. So you'll, you'll be able to um, reach out to some of those folks, if appropriate. And then you can definitely manage them by targeting them further based on their interests. So if people click through on something very specific, let's say you had an offer um, for an upcoming event and you had a certain number of people who clicked through to learn more about that event, well, you can always just segment them further into a separate list and send only those people a reminder that an event is coming up and that they'd better, better hurry and sign up for the event um, since time is passing quickly. So putting this all together, um, here's what your ideal email looks like just to give you a brief recap. Keep that subject line short, no more than eight words in about 35 characters. Um, include your name or your business name or both uh, in the from line of the text. Think about that pre-header text to en entice the readers further. Um, your logo itself, make sure is clickable. Um, usually those are clickable directly to the home page of your website. Um, make sure, again, you're using images sparingly, but keep them all clickable as well and have no more than three images in there. And then also minimizing the number of clicks, um, the number of colors that are used. And don't forget, include your social media buttons so that if folks want to interact with you on your social channels, they'll be able to find you very, very quickly. So what small business marketing is about, it's about nurturing those relationships, delivering on your promise, and again, those measurable results. Because if you're not measuring your marketing, you're not really marketing. So you can do this even if you haven't started yet, even if you feel like you have a very small contact list. Um, you can send this out um, even on a, on a, a, a test email um, through a, a trial account with Constant Contact. You can have a 60-day trial and just see what happens. So you definitely can do this. Um, you want to think about all those marketing campaigns that you have in one place. So you can have a 60-day free trial, as I mentioned. Prospectfinder.constantcontact.com um, is uh, the place that you can go to actually get that email marketing um, a 60 day free trial. Um, Constant Contact blogs have excellent articles about them, not only on email, but also social media strategies and tips. There's guides, there's videos, there's infographics, there's recorded webinars. So definitely check out um, that particular site. And I do provide some uh, local support as well, uh, local seminars and webinars. And I'm going to be having boot camps as well. So if you ever want to see what those are coming up, um, I do have one coming up later this month. I'll send you some information about that. Um, but you can always check out where my local events are by going to my website, theprospectfinder.com forward slash events. And with the boot camp, I'm keeping those, size, those class sizes small, about 10 people or less. And um, I can come on site to your team if you prefer that I train a group at your own facilities. So at this point, I'm going to just check and see if we had any questions that might have come up um, in the chat box. And feel free at this point to uh, type in those questions. and. Um, I'll give you a moment to go ahead and do that. I'm not seeing any additional questions that came up during the webinar. And as I said, I will send you all a copy of the slides and a link to the webinar in case you, you're interested in receiving that. And I thank you all for your attention today. Uh, please contact me afterward through email or my social sites if any questions do come to mind. And I wish you all a great rest of the day.